Even more than not getting to try any of that Szechuan sauce at McDonald's, Rick and Morty fans have long had one frustration in common. The fact that it takes ages for new Rick and Morty episodes to come out. Series creators Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland have gone on record about their disagreements and their lengthy iteration process and just how hard it is to make these episodes many times. They even said last year at Comic-Con that the long delays between Rick and Morty seasons are a thing of the past. And yet, they weren't even able to get season 4 done in time last year. Only half of a season aired in 2019, with the back five episodes currently arriving weekly, six months later. Half the season you deserve, all the season we could handle. But Rick and Morty fans want more Rick and Morty. It's understandable, Rick and Morty is so good that no amount of it will ever be enough. Look no further than Solar Opposites, the new show by Justin Roiland and Rick and Morty writer and producer Mike McMahon. The simplest way to describe Solar Opposites is, it's like an interdimensional cable gag that accidentally stretched into eight entire episodes like the rest of the Rick and Morty crew went home one night and forgot to turn off the recording booth, and Royland, who was probably drunk, just kept riffing until he'd improvised an entire new world. The show follows an alien family that crash-landed on Earth after an asteroid hit their home planet, Schlorp. Royland voices Corvo, the default patriarch of the family, obsessed with repairing their spaceship and getting off Earth, which he hates. Thomas Middleditch plays Terry, who's like Corvo's partner. He's dumb as hell. He loves fun and pop culture. And the two kids, or in this case, replicants, are Yumulak, played by Sean Giambroni, and Jesse, played by Mary Mack. Lastly, there's the pupa, a mischievous bug-eyed slug that will one day, apparently, mature and devour everything on Earth, terraforming it in the image of Schlorp. Now, Corvo isn't exactly like Rick, but the two characters have a lot in common. They're both curmudgeonly, they both love science, they're disdainful of humanity, and they're detached from most earthly concerns that us mere humans possess. Royland voices both characters, and his signature tipsy cadence, you know, where he stumbles deliberately through dialogue as if he's always forgetting the words halfway through. My name's Corvo. This is, this is my show. I just dropped the pupa. Do you see me? Th th this is ridiculous. I hate Earth. Feels really familiar. Familiar and, and warm to existing Rick and Morty fans. Like Rick and Morty, Solar Opposites is full of high-concept sci-fi nonsense, like the stressed-out, raisin-like creatures that leap from the alien's pores instead of sweat, or the sneakers that let you go back in time except you're effectively a ghost and you can't touch anything unless you bring the Retouch Your stuff a super advanced gadget that coincidentally resembles a spork strapped to a stick. Solar Opposites is clearly less improvised than Rick and Morty, but a lot of its gags retain that kind of hacked-together feel, as if when they're hunting for new sci-fi terms and gadgets, the writers kind of just throw random syllables and concepts together and run with whatever sounds funniest. Structurally, Solar Opposites is a lot more of a traditional sitcom than Rick and Morty is. Solar Opposites will be right back after the set of, the, the set of subsequent advertisements. Each episode sees an A-plot that usually involves Corvo and Terry, something like Corvo's repeated and pointless attempts to get Terry interested in repairing the ship, or the one where Corvo gets really into performance magic and winds up jumping into a black hole, or the time Corvo finds out that TV shows aren't real and Terry convinces him to recreate their favorite ALF-like sitcom alien as a Frankenstein-esque monster that eventually Cronenberg's out, naturally, and destroys half the town. Meanwhile, the kids get up to their own hijinks in a B-plot, like trying to fit in with the cool kids at school by entrancing them using the spores emitted from the flowers growing on their heads, or constantly shrink raying anyone and everyone who even slightly annoys them and depositing them into a wall-sized habitat in their room, you know, like aliens do. That habitat, called The Wall, provides one of the season's through lines, as the tiny people trapped inside, including characters voiced by really well-known actors like Andy Daly, Christina Hendricks, and Alfred Molina, go through their own Mad Max-esque journey in a functional but also autocratic and terrifying society, with an economy built mainly on the candy and chunks of Slim Jims and other knickknacks that Yemulak and Jesse, the alien kids, give them. And of course, meanwhile, the pupa has its own crazy adventures, usually after it wanders off and, say, gets sold into an elite cabal's menagerie of rare Disney-like animals, or entrances an elderly neighbor into opening the childproof kitchen cabinet that it can't reach itself. 
The thing that really makes Solar Opposites work is its brutality. It's shocking a lot of the time. Rick and Morty fans know that that show doesn't pull any punches. As funny as Rick and Morty is, it's also dark and violent. It doesn't shy away from mind-bending reveals and soul-crushing questions that keep you up at night. In that way, especially, Solar Opposites and Rick and Morty are pretty much the same. Corvo and his brood of aliens are not ALF, they are not E.T., and this is not Third Rock from the Sun, in which a family of stranded aliens tried their best to empathize with and blend in with humanity. A lot of Solar Opposites episodes borrow classic alien invasion conceits for dark humor. Like when Yumulak and Jessie kidnap a classmate, shrink her down, and lobotomize her by pouring soda over her brain. Or when Corvo and Terry dump nanomachines into the town's water supply and then later harvest them back from their neighbor's pee in order to spy on their memories and find out why nobody likes them. These aliens may appreciate human pop culture to varying degrees and enjoy living on Earth, but at the end of the day they have little regard for human life with always hilarious repercussions. Rick and Morty Season 4 is almost over. I've enjoyed this season a lot, I've enjoyed the later episodes more than I enjoyed the first half, but this is clearly a difficult show for Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon to make, and despite any and all reinsurances they might give, it's safe to assume there's going to be more delays in the future. For now, I feel okay about that because there are 8 episodes of Solar Opposites streaming on Hulu to watch whenever you feel like having more Rick and Morty-esque madness in your life. And as always, subscribe to GameSpot Universe for more breakdowns of the stuff you love.